back in August, I received a message in the inbox of the Chatted Up Facebook page. Now, getting a message there is not uncommon, but what was in the message definitely was. It started with words of encouragement and praise for the work I was doing on the podcast. But then, the note quickly transitioned into letting me know about an Upper Peninsula-based film project that was going on that I might be interested in. And there was even a link for me to follow. What I found is an ambitious web series called Northbound. I was extremely impressed by what I saw. So when I found out the co-creator Seth Anderson was coming to Marquette to do a screening of the first two seasons... I knew that he and I needed to meet. So without further ado, let's chat it up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 14 of the Chat It Up podcast. I'm sitting here with Seth Anderson. Seth, thank you for joining me on the podcast. Thanks for sitting down, and, and uh, I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of the podcast and, yeah. well, and uh, listen to everything, so uh, it's great to be on. Well, and I'm just as a uh, big a fan of yours and what you guys have been doing here, and we'll kind of jump into that in, in a minute. But uh, let's talk a little bit about, you grew up in the Iron Mountain area, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I got family all the way up the uh, A Street up there on the east side of Iron Mountain. I was going to say, I, th- I thought I, I had here in my notes that you were an east sider. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, uh, we were on the, uh, so my brother and I, Nathan, who uh, does it, he's the uh, co-creator with me on this, what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, we grew up on the 800 block, and my great-grandfather, uh, son of Anders, Gustav uh, came in, and I saw him. I saw him come in in Ellis Island, 1896. He comes in here. He's on the 700 block. Still see the house there. <laughs> my grandfather grew up on the 600 block. So, and then my dad would have been there too. So Anderson's all the way up A Street. Millie Hill was our playground. Sure. And you know, in the weird way, those those things come full circle. We're shooting up there now, and you know, it's it's pictures uh, where I would look from the 1920s. I'd see. You know, if you know that area, the playground that's there and the baseball field, and you'd be like, man, the continuity is crazy. Yeah. You know? What I think is interesting is how you said, okay, it was 600 block, then 700 <laughs> block, then 800 block. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you're you're like the Jeffersons. You're moving on up. Yeah, I but know. You're already, we are. But you're already on the east side. It's not to the east side. Yeah, but... yeah. We were, we were planted there. <laughs> and, you know, and it, it, you know it. it. It is a hill. Yeah, and it was always that thing that it still is that thing that we like because uh, I will bike and I like to run, sure. and it still is that hill, that obstacle. If I'm going back to where my mom is now, you know, I got to be like, oh man, I got to face that hill. Either I got to come up behind on the north side, I got to figure it out from park, or it's just yeah, the hilliness of a you know, it's it's relatively flat area. That's the one thing with northbound and go like we don't have a lot of mountains, but we have a lot of hills. That when you're walking them, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when you get out there and you're trying to film, you know, yeah. it, when you're when you're doing your your northbound saga, which the the scenery kind of plays a, a key role in that, yeah, and, and we'll we'll definitely I want to touch on that a little bit more. Now, you're um, like quite a few of the other people that I've interviewed. You actually moved away from the area and mm-hmm. then moved back. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you, when you uh, you and I first kind of had made contact, you had let me know that you had been in Los Angeles prior to to coming back this way. So I guess my question is, what led you back this way from from LA? Well, it's pretty fresh, and and um, it's only been since we're coming up on a year now. Um, and I had been working. I was out there 13 years. I, did, I just figured that out. I just was wow. like, how long was I out there? You know, and that was a slow migration. So sure. my pattern was I went to school. I went down into Milwaukee. And then I jumped over to Minneapolis. And I think that that was emotionally just a way of kind of kind of jumping further and further out. Sure. Um, and then realizing I wanted to work in media. Um, sure. And specifically see what, uh, what I could do with filmmaking. Uh, Los Angeles or New York or even uh, some friends were going overseas. It's a good uh, 
schools out in uh, London, and, you know, and, and good European um, filmmaking apparatus there. But I was like, I don't want to go to Europe. You know, New York just seems right. Even then, seemed expensive. This is like late late nineties, early two thousands. So sure. Los Angeles at that point was still very uh, <laughs> yeah was very it was relatively affordable, and um, spent some time out there. Worked all over the place. Wore a lot of hats. Um, mainly worked in a lot of audio. Okay. Um, but at, over time, was was making films uh, on our own with my brother and our and Jason, our our brother from another mother and producer. And from there, I, I noticed uh, with the development of Northbound and North Star, I was coming back uh, regularly every six months. Okay. And the more I came back, as the project became a going concern, I, the more I saw things not only creatively and emotionally, like just just the work was really exciting. Sure. Um, Things were getting done. Things uh, we were really productive, and I found my presence there was was a net benefit every time I came back, and I loved coming back. Uh, and Los Angeles, and it's not like this like I left Los Angeles with hate or something, right? You know, it, it, it it's not an either or thing. I, I found it's a, it's a completely different experience out there from where I grew up. Uh, it's almost like a negative image, you know. It's desert and it's sure. not forested and it's dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you come back yeah. here and you got water and you you can actually, you know, uh, see fresh water. You know, just <laughs> you know. But um, but um, the pull started to happen, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think it's just one decision. It's just a series of decisions. Realizing creatively, I could I could work out here on un, uncompromised. Mm-hmm. Um, the work was was. Uh, Again, getting more and more finished, more complete, fuller every time we were back, and our team was growing. So it just felt really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess it's kind of that at the end of it, it feels good. To, to, it felt good. So after a while, um, I connected with a very talented uh, uh, cinematographer who's our cinematographer, Michael. He's coming in for Northbound 3. And uh, we started a business, decided to just say, we're going to make media out here. Yeah. And that became, that was it. Sure. I was like, if I can make media and live yeah. out here, a lot of exciting things happening in Marquette and up in um, Houghton and we're up in Calumet. Yeah. And exciting things happening in, in Dickinson. Yes. Um, where, and, and a lot of this, my story is not uncommon. I'm seeing a lot of people around our age just looking back and saying, if I can work in this area yes. and do what I want with, with no compromise um, and have the value and the cost of living and all of these things, the, the just stepping outside. Yeah. And, and having, you know, if you can deal with the winter, <laughs> it's a beautiful place to live. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it was, and it didn't take much convincing with my fiance. She was um, ready to, to live in the woods. <laughs> and, and Do, so. now the physical process of moving back, did you find that difficult? I mean, obviously you can't get any further west pretty <laughs> much. So to, to get your life back back home essentially was that was that a difficult thing to do? Yeah, well, I think um, it was a quick decision. Okay, we were going to do it. I think in May of 2018. So we were we were going to stage it out. We made we decided timing wise and with the business that I was going to form that we needed to really do this within three months. So we decided in like late September and we were driving in December. Wow, so it was okay. <laughs> it, not very common for me. If you know me, that is not something that you sure. know, comes easy. So we, we decided to do Route 66. And oh, interesting. We, we made a whole thing of that and drove in the winter telling, you know, be speaking how fast this decision was made. And um, so, so on that level, a lot of my life had already been transferred piece by piece over the last three years. Okay. A lot of the relationships were set up. Yeah. I, I would think that that would be natural yeah. if you were kind of coming back every six months. and Yeah. Uh, yeah, where I work was already had already been my home base when I got in. Sure. Um, and, again, those relationships, just I was just plugging in and just here more permanently. Sure. So it was kind of like, oh, he's just here now. Right. <laughs> you know, for better or worse, <laughs> he's just here. You know. So... The main reason you and I are sitting down today, obviously, is the Northbound Saga. So mm-hmm. for anybody listening in who isn't familiar with the project, why don't you walk me through what exactly Northbound Saga is? Well, Northbound uh, started as a feature film script that I had written, uh, I don't know, now we're looking at 
almost 10 years. So North Star has been written for a long time. And North Star was the feature film script that we shopped around in the conventional way you do in Los Angeles. Sure. You uh, either have connections through work or you send the script cold to a ton of people. You spread this net. And we worked on making North Star that way through uh, lower, smaller companies, boutique uh, sure. companies that are interested in a genre. Because it's, it's post-apocalyptic. Um, yeah. And it's, a, and it's set in a wilderness, so I, I call it, if you've seen The Revenant mixed with what now Stranger Things is pulling from, this kind of Stephen King 80s yeah. um, science fiction that in itself was actually looking at science fiction from the golden era and yes. modernizing it. You know? yeah. So it's like this, th- those interests were all in the air for a lot of people our age, but then um, I wanted us to, be, to, be, to look like The Revenant or something uh, survival yeah. Based that was like it could be set in the 1800s. It's just 15 years in the future. Sure. So um, that was the kernel, and in North Star, uh, we wanted to make it a community project. So uh, from there, we came out to Iron Mountain, and, and we had a you know if you know the the high school Iron Mountain High School as the Izzo Mariucci Center, we had an open house there, and we had a packed house. And this was like 2015, 2014. And we just told people about North Star. That was what we were saying. We right. want to just see if there's a, an interest here. What We want people to know I'm, you know, meet me again because I've been gone for years. And from that, the community really came in. And the people that we really connected with became the uh, key forces in making Northbound a reality. Uh, we started just saying this will be a proof of concept. Again, with the model of making North Star conventionally by selling the script and getting and 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 you, having a, a bigger company come in and help us get it made, so that was going to be proof of concept. It was going to be a video. That video got a lot of attention, and it's actually I knew we were fine when I saw some of the first aerials we were getting from North Northbound, like this the first season. It's like there's a lot we can do now. We can get up in the air. We can see the UP sure. in a way that that I had always wanted to see it. So that proof of concept got attention, and then um, our first distributor. Uh, just out of the blue got in, uh, in touch with us and said, can you turn this into episodic content? And then we, that kind of lit a little bit of a uh, light bulb in our heads, and we were like, okay, well, that's when I started coming home. Okay. And that's when I started to say, okay, we're going to make this a going concern. I'm going to write scripts, and we're going to make this a prequel, reverse engineering from the script, the North Star script. Sure. And uh, that was season one, and then that just has grown as more of the community has come in Season two was our big turning point, and it became this story that's leading in to what is now kind of like a feature length at the end of the day when we get to season three finished to, to uh, yeah. North Star. It's, it's been a journey, and it was the right way to do it. Sure. It was, it was like we're showing community-based yeah. filmmaking, you know. And Michigan is a strange, uh, has, a strange has a good history, and a, and a, a, a history right now is kind of we're in a weird place with um, filmmaking as a community here. We had a great tax incentive program yeah. uh, for a long time, and North Star, when we were trying to sell it, was actually one of the one of the great selling points was the tax rebate system. Yeah, because you put spend X amount of dollars. Sure. And that was also a, uh, when I talked to people about in the community about what an economic impact a feature film has. That was one of the selling points. You know. Yeah. So we lost that. I think that was 2015. Um, but we decided to just double down and say, well, we're going to hold the flame up here because there's so much talent that wants to, to make this happen. There's so many opportunities that we're able to give uh, when we just go out and shoot. And, and So, long story short, I mean, I guess I could talk about the content of the show. I'm sorry. I was well, kind of telling no, you about no, the you, making of it, you know. Yeah. You're, you're totally fine. That's what we're here for is to have that combo. One of the questions I do have, though, based off of what you were just talking about is I know you mentioned that your brother Nathan, you kind of co-created this with him mm-hmm. did he come on board when it became more of like doing the episodes or was he a part of this right from like the early creation standpoint of the the script that you wrote yeah 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 nate's my brother nate is there from the nathan and jason are yeah jason all three of us yeah our producer okay yeah jason hagan correct yeah, okay. jason hagan i want to make sure he, he that we give him a shout out we too, have so. to because jason yeah. is um is the heart of the ghostbusters there um yeah but um the three of us came up with what would be the lore of the north star world and northbound the lore that's that is showing up more and more in these episodes yeah and then 
uh, what we'll do is we'll do we'll spitball the scenarios and we'll work out that script and that was our first real collaboration where we were like everything we want in a film yeah. a science fiction film uh, and what we've seen all our lives just putting and and what what could Michigan be as a canvas for that yeah that was what we did with North Star I usually en- end up doing the nuts and bolts writing sure Kind of were they the out in lifting. LA? Were they, yeah, yeah. We were, were all in LA when okay. this started. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now sure. we've gotten married and we're all dispersed. But at that sure. point, we were living in a. Uh, well, at one point, we were in a uh, one bed one bedroom apartment. Four guys who were a room in Hollywood, just living the life, <laughs> right. living the dream. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that gives me a little bit of better of a context, I guess, as to how <laughs> yeah. this kind of came together. It was Air Mattress City. I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I can I can only imagine. Um, so. I guess walk me through a little bit how this actually got off the ground a little more. Sure. Um, Because obviously you mentioned, you know, you have this kind of meet and greet, you know, in Iron Mountain at the Isomer Uchi Center. But then from there, obviously, it's not like you can just snap your fingers and all of a sudden you're you're in the midst of, like, filming this. Because obviously everything's got to kind of come together somehow. Can you walk me through that process a little bit? Well, simple. This wouldn't have happened without a volunteer effort. Yeah. Uh, this wouldn't have happened with this person saying, I've got this resources. This person saying, I can get you this location. Um, Faye Mann and Rehoy, who's our, our logistics coordinator and has been on the ground while we've been in L.A. or New York or wherever, she's the person coordinating all of these people, all of these volunteers. So managerially, we had somebody. Sure. Uh, we had actors. I mean, a lot of people want to be in films, but we needed someone to help us with casting, and Faye is there with that. And then, of course... When you shoot in Los Angeles, you set down a tripod anywhere. They're going to ask you, Where, what's your permit? Where's yeah. your union card? <laughs> you do this in most cities. Sure. You know, um, Here, we had the benefit of personal relationships. And these people coming in out of the woodwork saying, I, I, I see what you're doing, especially as we got to shooting. What can I do for you for the location? What can I do for you with... Um, Props. What can I do to help? And we got a production design department out of that. Sure. Our, our, our production designer, Austin, um, is a brilliant engineer by day, but by night the guy's making props. You know? And so a lot of people were pouring their skill sets and some untapped things, I think, on some level um, that they'd been wanting to do and explore within themselves. And that formed the core of our family. So, and, that, and that also with, you know, it costs... There's a lot of costs, so a lot of yeah. us were pooling our resources sure. to make Northbound One. Yeah, I was going to ask you. I, I mean, I know you have like a distributor, but mm-hmm. I didn't know if the, uh, how much of this was self-funded. And you Northbound know, One was Northbound yeah. One was yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, when we got to Northbound Two, we had a um, uh, a Kickstarter campaign that that got uh, that really did push us forward, and then from there we brought in our uh, sponsorship, which we we got uh, with Ripit Energy Drinks. They came in. And uh, underwrote some of uh, what we've been shooting even up to now in the summer. Sure. So, um, and this is just the Wild West right now. We're yeah. talking <laughs> Kickstarter mixed with brands coming in and saying, okay, we're going to look at the web space and see what, if we put X amount of dollars into this, we'll see what the return is. They're just experimenting. Mm-hmm. And then you have your distributor to give you something that's a set, a very um, uh, professional presentation. Yeah. Uh, and they're working out how to monetize that as well. Sure. So, for what's emerging is a filmmaking ecosystem to me that is what we, I like to call a kind of blue collar filmmaking system where filmmakers are establishing a direct relationship with their audience. And that audience uh, is sustainable enough to help not only be a part of the production, community based filmmaking, which is like my mantra, right. but also uh, sustain the work and, and hopefully um, help just propagate more work open up more doors for people to do that and then we're a community that's saying you know we don't just make post-apocalyptic like survival actioners here yeah. we can make personal stories that aren't told uh, and that's happening I mean it's you see it here um, I just want to see more of it yeah you know so so money is always a thing um, <laughs> and, and finding money in this space it really is audience numbers yeah you know so the value of our community is the first thing my sure. first priority making sure people, uh, we talk to them, we see them, uh, they tell us what they like, what they don't, and then we, um, they know they're a part of it. They know they're not, it's not just like 
Kickstarter every once in a while. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're going to fundraise and I'm going to make you nuts for 30 days. Right. <laughs> You're just going to get sick of me. It's more, you can be a part of this. This is how we make this happen. You've seen it happen. Yeah. You know, we're not just talking. This is happening and yeah. it's growing. And that's, that's, it's an exciting space, but it's, It is. You know. And I, I love that you brought up, you know, community filmmaking. I think one thing that, Youpers all across the UP know is that all of our communities are very tight knit, and once we get behind something, if it's something that we believe in, yeah. you know, like you said, everybody starts pooling their resources or starts chipping in, and yes. you know, we we take care of our own and and we figure out a way to get stuff done. And, and I feel like the way you're describing to me how this kind of came together very much embodies that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the right way to make this. Yeah, and 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 it's still experimental, but it um. But audiences, I, I think we're seeing the, the long tail of audience uh, interaction with media right now. That we want to see real, like stories that have a niche. And we want to see Faye is coming in here. Hi, sir. And we want to see, com- you know. Are you young? Yeah. Um, so we want to see, um, you know, we want to see stories told from different perspectives. And sure. I think that, that the audience can, can be there for that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as you were kind of describing what the the project is kind of based around a lot of it as you said survivalist kind mm-hmm. of naturalist do you think that the inspiration behind that or at least i would assume a lot of the inspiration behind that comes from the way life was growing up for you yeah. in the up and just the way we know kind of life in the up to be yeah i mean it's in, totally informed by growing up here and uh all of the people in my life that i've observed you know, some of the characters are composites of people I've known in my life. Sure. Um, there's a little of my dad and the minister character in Northbound. There's a little bit of the guy, the guy that plays, Mike March, who plays Wallace. There's, um, there's a lot of the do-it-yourself quality that, uh, you know, w- w- what, we have this challenge? Well, we're going to figure out one way, this way or that way or through, you know. Yeah. So, so, and also the story got informed by, we get back to this idea of community. The story was like, well, if the apocalypse happened in the Upper Peninsula, they might be the most well-equipped people to deal <laughs> yeah. with, with all of the many fail, failures that happen with the civilization, right? right. And, and so, so when it started to inform the writing, because North Star was a set thing, but Northbound was this, uh, this flowing thing. It was something we were writing, sure. we knew where we had to get. But we started to go, well, what if they're not, it's not a bloodbath? You know, what if it's right. not Walking Dead where everybody is just an antagonist, yeah. right? And a kind of fatalistic worldview. What if it's, what if there are good people kind of holding the flame out there in the woods? There are, there's got to be drama with some people that aren't necessarily yeah. doing that, right? Yeah. Um, but but that, that fueled, the more it got fueled, yeah. fueled and infused sure. into the story, the more you realize it's a UP product, you know? And I feel like a lot of the locations that you've used are almost characters in and of themselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the background, I shouldn't even say background, but the cinematography of it has been just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. From the beginning. Been- From the beginning it has yeah. been. How... How do you pick your locations that you end up filming at? I mean, is there a lot of scouting that goes into it, or is it more just kind of what's readily available, or is there a little bit of both? Northbound started as locations that were set. I mean, I mentioned Millie Hill and things like that, but some of the mining infrastructure that's all over uh, Iron Mountain, Kingsford, uh, the lake. Uh, So Lake Antoine was right there, Northbound 1. I just was like, you know, bucket list stuff. Yeah. Um, And then from there, uh, even at the beginning, Northbound 1, we were uh, going up to Houghton. And we needed the science fiction layer that's in the story that's on mm-hmm. top of the woodsy survival stuff. And those, uh, we formed a relationship really, really early on there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we got into Houghton Hancock. Where we're, we're, we just shot at Michigan Tech again in August. So that allowed us to get these modern buildings, these modern structures that, again, sure. you shoot these in Los Angeles and you're, you're going you're gonna to have your budget, right? Yeah. So right away we were branching out there. I had remembered K.I. Sawyer. Yeah. Uh, and I had remembered p- specific buildings, and I had scouted that over many years. Just like, just like, what is the most interesting structure? How is it holding up? Yeah. Because you never know with KI. Right. Right. And and uh, finally, we were shooting there in 2016, and it was the fruit of a lot of scouting and 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 the flavor that I had noticed yes. in, these, in these places. But um, you know, Piers Gorge was there right away. 
Absolutely. Uh, and, and that came out of Nate Elwine, who our actor, our, our main actor. Yeah. He he approached us out of that uh, that outreach event that we had had sure. back in 2014. He said, I live near Piers Gorge, and I saw you walking across the <laughs> other side of the Wisconsin side. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I've been wanting to shoot there for... He's like, well, I have a house right there. And I was like, can we get up in the air? And you got your first shot of Northbound with the right. Piers Gorge, which to me is still like, okay, we're off to the races. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and they're still bucket list, believe me. I mean, oh, as, sure. as this story expands, we haven't even gotten to the yeah. Great Lakes. We haven't gotten to Superior. Yeah. Um, We've got stuff in Escanaba I've been looking at. We've got stuff over in the Sioux. It's just... I think that's great, though, because on one side of it, there's just so many beautiful places across the UP that are even that much more beautiful when you get them on film, number one. But number two, it also... For anybody out there that maybe is thinking about, like, getting into filmmaking, because, I mean, let's be honest, there's a lack of filmmakers in the UP. I would well, like, I'd like yeah. to see a lot more. It doesn't and, seem possible. Yeah. yeah. And so when you're going out there and you're getting to these locations and you're all across the UP, you're basically kind of showing them, hey, this can be done. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be this apocalyptic survival thing. You could, t- I mean, I've got a whole detective story that I've thought about where it's, you know, it doesn't have to be Fargo, but, it, <laughs> yeah. you know, where... Um, a, the, the types of story you tell yeah. in this canvas, within this sandbox that is the Upper Peninsula, um, it's a primal land. It's got, it's got eons of history, and it looks amazing if you just look for it. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, um, I tell people, you know, uh, and I say this sometimes, but it's like when we go, we go out to people that ha- don't know the area. Sure. Everybody asks us where we shoot this thing. Mm-hmm. They're like, are you in Romania? You know, I've gotten Alaska. I've gotten... Um, you know, after the Revenant had shot in Chile, they were asking if it was South America because there's no snow. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, so um, you know, uh, it, it, it's our most beautiful actor. It's our most volatile actor. Yes, it's, it is. You know, I, I start with the land on every episode. That's the setting. Yes, Michigan is the project on mm-hmm. that level, and just and then we go into this the people that populated in their story. So that's why you always see the land right right away. Absolutely. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'll throw you a little bit of a curveball here. What do you think you enjoy most about filming in the UP? Well, I love our I love our community. I love our family. I love getting out there. There are days that are very hard, uh, especially with independent filmmaking. You got to make your days, and you've got to shoot uh, sixteen hours, and you don't have a lot of light in the winter. Yeah. Um, but you come out of it, and and people are smiling. People are like, no, let's get it right. So I would say my favorite part is working with the, not only the core group we've got, but the expanding group that comes in and how welcoming it's been for anyone that comes into the project. Sure. We have an actor in uh, some of the new footage we'll be showing here. Uh, his name's Dan Class, and he's actually a podcast pioneer, so that's in, uh, just a note. And he's one of our actors. He knew, I wrote a character for him in North Star. Okay. That we finally were able to put into Northbound 3. And after 10 odd years, <laughs> he finally came out to Lo- from Los Angeles this summer and interacted in the ways that you, you know, you're kind of like, I don't know how it's going to go. Sure. You know, he's LA. We'll see. And you're always thinking about what's that interface going to be like if you've never been up here. Yeah. And um, our community is just, he's just online all the time, pushing everything out. So, Everybody that comes into it sees this. This uh, he he mentioned it in one of his podcasts. He said, he said people live their lives so fully here. Yeah, um, they're not just. There's people working, uh, you know, at the big companies out in Iron Mountain Systems and CCI. They're doing that sure. by day, and then they are they're going out in the woods. They're enjoying their families. We've got kids running around. Yeah, you know. So, um, he, and he saw the new business stuff happening too. Okay. You know, there's a, there's just a lot of new things happening in Iron yeah. Mountain where it was like, wow, you've got you've got just about everything you'd ever need. Sure. So he was like, man. So he was already looking yeah. at real estate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, how cheap is it? He couldn't believe, like, just for now. I was like, yeah. for now it's cheap. But, you know. So you, you just kind of mentioned a little bit about, you know, you run out of daylight pretty quick and yeah. the weather and... What other sort of struggles have you had with the filmmaking proce- process? I mean, obviously, it can't all go yeah. smooth for you. Yeah. 
Well, setting aside the, the, the constant search for resource financial, just trying to make sure we can actually shoot on the, at the times because we've got a lot of people yeah, yeah. that are now involved. We've got over 50 people at any given time right now at Northbound 3. Getting them all on the same page schedule-wise is something that Faye, God bless her, is, is so good at weaving that. But also, um, you set that aside, then you're dealing with, at first, it was the gear. It was just getting uh, the apparatus, the filmmaking sure. apparatus, the, the, some of the skill sets we really need. You do need like a sound guy. You need, a, yeah. you need uh, someone to light. You need a gaffer. And, and a lot of people we groom towards that. I realize that that guy over there doesn't know it, but he's going yeah. to be an amazing at running sound next season. But So we had to figure out how to get all that up here. And a lot of that was Michigan. We wanted to keep it Michigan, so we kept it kept coming from lower Michigan, which is where a lot of it's developed. Sure. So that that just the 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 sausage making the sausage of films you got like the, right, the gear you know right, right yeah um, then there's the land that'll always throw a curveball and I mean it does go back in the winter we shoot these things it's beautiful but you've got you got six hours right where you really are getting something even with your daylight and everybody's cold and yeah and you got to make your days so yeah do you think that a lot of the struggles that you just mentioned are what hold back a lot of filmmakers or why maybe there aren't as many filmmakers around Mm -hmm. the UP or do you think maybe there's a little more to it that's maybe kind of holding back people from from filmmaking around these parts we gotta the first thing you gotta have you gotta be able to do that you gotta be able to have the stamina and and you've got to have the passion to be able to go uh you know four hours a night and go outside in the cold at 5 a.m you've got to have the passion to work on your project so you set that aside, then it's really about just what I hope with Northbound is we're modeling that you can do it anywhere. So I think there's a mental, there, there is a mental uh, picture of what can be done here. Uh, one of our actors says, my zip code does not define me, and she's now acting all over the place. I like and that. You know, and I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think now we are at a time where the, the technology is affordable, the resources are here, the stories that we want to tell and the audiences for these stories are here. So we have to push. It's just that it's just not commonly done. Yeah. So you have to kind of get over that mental veil of like, of whatever you put on yourself when you say you want to make art somewhere. Um, you have to sit, and, and I gotta say, you gotta sit down and you gotta write it. Mm-hmm. And you gotta carve out an hour in your life to dedicate to that spark that you have, if you have that inclination. Sure. Sometimes it's just sitting down, showing up, and if nothing comes, well, that's fine, but you sat down, yeah. right? So it's work ethic, it's, it's saying yes instead of no to yourself. Mm-hmm. I have this passion. Yeah. And there's so many world, we live in a world of no's here. <laughs> you know? yeah, Everybody's well, yeah. gonna say no, you're gonna do that? Yeah. You gotta be the person that says yes to yourself. So that's that's it's, I know that sounds like really like uh, self development, but that like is Tony really Robbins-ish. something. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. but that, that really you gotta say yes to yourself, and um, and then you've got to have the fortitude when it gets hard because yeah. it does get hard, and that is the daily work, sure. work, and you're not getting paid some a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, but you are forging reality when you're a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. You're focusing. All your lights, your camera, your actors are in one point in reality, and you are changing reality, and it is the most exciting thing. It's peak experience. Yeah. So, you know, the rewards are way beyond anything financial I could mention. And, right. And that's a perk, though. And, and you should... The other thing is you've got to make it a business, but how do we make it a business? That's, that, that ground beneath us is fluctuating right now. Right. You know? Well, and, you know, you just mentioned the rewards, and part of the rewards is showing off your finished product. Right. I mean, because as you mentioned earlier, obviously your audience is everything, you mm-hmm. know, for you, and having that base audience is the key to it all. Yes. So you guys have kind of been, I don't want to say barnstorming, but you've, yes. been, you've been kind of, you know, cruising around the UP, and you've been doing free screenings of seasons one and two, and, you know, doing Q&As and, yes. and getting out there. How has that response been? Well, we... Um, we like I said, your audience is really your measure of success at this point when you're making films, web series, web content. So building the audience was a priority this year after we had gotten to a point where we had some new material and mm-hmm. we, were reach, we were going into a new era, which is really what I look at as the final era of Northbound leading yeah. into North Star. Sure. So um, the suggestion of the breweries started to come up 
that was just Nate, our actor again, who just comes up with these ideas. And we're like, oh, that's a kind of fun venue. Why don't we? And it's Iron Ironwood. I haven't been out there, so we were like, well, why don't we just see if we can see uh, tell people about the project there? Yeah. We had our core at the Brow Mart. We're going into right now with Ordock and Marquette, and then we're going to be up at the County Met Theater uh, in two days here on Saturday. Yep. And the response is, it's, it's really uh, these moments with each era as we go into each season are a point where the train stops. We give you a summation of what we've done. We show yep. off, like, you know, this is the latest state of our art, and you're welcome to come in. So I look at these as something as a kind of like, the train stop, come on board, this is the community, this is the family. Hopefully you like us, you get a sense of who we are, yep. how it's done. Hopefully the barrier for entry isn't uh, too scary, um, and uh, and come on board. We're going into the next phase. Yeah. So at each le- at each stop, I look at this screening series, which has been amazing because we have been able to get out into the UP and and show it. Uh, the Brow Mart, you know, down in Iron Mountain has been our home in Iron Mountain, and we've had some we've had three packed screenings there. So there are like our very yeah. um, fortified home. And I love know. that. I'm, I love that. That building has been yeah, not revived, but it's it's got a second life. It's they're blessed with the people they have there. Um, they they really are. Yeah, and it you know it's obviously a lot of it is being from there and having all that nostalgia factor oh, of, yeah. of going and seeing movies there as a kid and everything. Yeah. But just everything that's going on there just makes me really happy to see to see that building thriving in the art scene yeah and art and music scene thriving there still it is. is just it's awesome yeah it's situated perfectly for downtown to get revitalized it really is it's the perfect uh, arts and culture hub for more restaurants and more walking traffic yeah and, and you know and more small businesses that um it's it, it's so exciting how prime downtown iron mountain is to and taking cues from places like marquette taking sure. cues from even hancock and calumet just Lean into your history. Make sure that, that, that that's evident because a lot of us, you know, people our age, we really like older buildings, yeah, right? right? <laughs> you know, but I want, you know, the modern amenities and that, yeah. you know. So uh, it's starting to really um, turn a corner there. It really you know? is. Yeah. Now, so you mentioned, okay, so you're obviously here at the Ordoc tonight. Saturday, you guys are going to be in Calumet. Yeah. This episode will obviously come out after all of that is mm-hmm. over and done with. Do you have any other screenings or anything planned maybe coming up past? It, yeah, it's a glimmer in uh, in our eyes for 2019. Uh, I will say right now we are going to be finishing Northbound 3 in the spring, late April. Yeah. Um, so we're going to probably make that a priority and kind of pivot towards that going in right away into 2019. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing a little more fundraising as well. So it's a whole thing. Yep. And out of that process, we should have Northbound 3. Right. And from there, with the relationships we're building with this series of screenings, we would just like to do regional premieres all over of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So Northbound 1 through 3. Because um, 3 is going to be your final season, correct? Yeah, the last shot of Northbound 3 goes to the first shot of North Star. So, so, <laughs> so basically the way it... You're choosing to end on season three because of the way it was written. Yes. Is yeah. what I'm gathering. Because yeah. that was going to be one of my questions, what made you end it at season three? But that totally makes sense as far as mm-hmm. continuity with... Well, there's with, so much story with it. It's, it's a saga, and there's a lot, like I said, a lot of yeah. lore. Um, but we think with this era, three just naturally feels like the point where we need to just kind of close out that era... North Star is just just so apparently coming as a creative thing. It's it's like what we're doing with three is we're just kind of working out the bugs. We're kind of yeah. doing a dry run. We're saying, okay, are we ready for an independently made feature film? Are we mm-hmm. ready stamina wise? Are we ready gear wise? Is that going to just hold together? Because when you bring a feature film, you're going to bring in more much more. You know, so three was written that way, but it was also just felt naturally like that's a point in time the feature is just wanting to to come here so and everybody likes trilogies yes and (laughs) that too it's a beginning middle and end you know (laughs) i don't know fourth seasons have you you know you gotta get to er before it gets good on those things (laughs) so moving into the future here your your end game even though there's not really truly an end game is as season three finishes you're you're really going for this feature film with north star right Mm mm-hmm so, I, 
I love that you're you're kind of using this as a, as a catapult in a way to to you know hitting that goal of yours because it's an ambitious goal. Mm-hmm. I, I you know a, a feature film is is no small task. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it, just from our interview, or I should even just say our conversation because it's more of a convo than it is an interview. But the the steps and the people involved just in shooting a web series yeah the moving parts the moving parts to to then put that on a larger scale you know it's well you scale up you know you you say we okay we widened our grip a little bit more with season two and we realized we could do that we widen our grip now we set goals sure for that with three we get to that point a feature film is just within reach i i do feel like we are we're 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 setting up a lot of creative things here to finish with three that we need to meet before yeah but I, I, I do feel that it is just waiting in the wings to make that feature yeah. film. Now, I love the web, so we, you know, we, we will, might just pivot right back into the web with some of this, the way we tell this story. Sure. It's a long story. I mean, there's feature film ideas, but there's also the web, which is an exciting new Wild West. If anything we can do to continue production in the area, mm-hmm. um, where, you know, maybe we, we kind of, level up, make a feature film for about a year, then come back and are yeah. doing something on the web that's in the middle there. Anything we can do to foster regular production every year mm-hmm. will be the goal from my point of view. Sure, absolutely. You know, whether it be large scale like yeah. a feature or just at a point where mm-hmm. maybe a little lower scale web where you can bring in more people that yeah. might want to make films and, and foster that for some, yeah. for open up opportunities you know, that people can use. Right? So if somebody can't make it to one of your events and they do want to watch it on the web, how do they find it? Well, our new distributor is a great group uh, out of Minneapolis. It's uh, Sika.tv. And uh, we got in, uh, started working with them in 2016. And you can go watch Northbound 1 and 2 right now in mm-hmm. episodic form for free right on that platform. It's beautiful. It's, it works with the web uh, all the things the web needs. It works on a website, it works on the cell phone, it works on the laptop, and you can even put it on if you've got Apple TV. Sure. You can, I watch it on TV. Yeah. Um, and I do recommend watching on big screen. I'm one of those David Lynch guys that's like, you know, if you can, try to watch it like what we're doing here at Ordoc. It really benefits, especially the, the, the natural photography we've got all yeah. over this thing. Uh, this series was meant for a wide vista. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to get involved and volunteer or help you out, or in any way, how do how do they go about volunteering or, or getting involved? What's the be- what's the best way to make that happen? Well, the best way right now is to just go to northstarsaga.com and contact us with the contact that's right there. Um, we're very responsive. I mean, we are all over the social media, but you know, I think that if we can get your email mm-hmm. and we can uh, get your name and put you in our database, we can figure out uh, where where you live, where yeah, you where yeah, right, right. because we're all over and yeah. and, and, and I think if we can get that contact first, and you can tell us what you're interested in, mm-hmm. whether it be behind the scenes work or being in front of camera. I mean, a lot of Northbound 3 is, right now, we have a lot of extras we need. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's no problem there if you want to come in and just see what the experience is like. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, but uh, if you're interested in, I, I, I am a filmmaker. I want to see more filmmakers grow and be able to have the opportunity. So if you are interested in working behind the scenes, uh, we'll put you to work. And <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm glad that you said that because really one of my last questions here was going to be to you, if there's somebody out there that's listening to this and maybe they're thinking about getting into filmmaking and they just haven't taken that step or they just don't know where to go, what sort of advice would you give to somebody that wants to kind of take that step into filmmaking or into that yeah. world? Um, if you have that inkling, if you have that feeling that you want to do this, you have to give yourself permission to do it. And you have to say yes to yourself first because there's going to be a lot of people who will say no to you. Mm-hmm. Or they'll, they'll, in, in so many different words. Right. So the first thing is to give yourself permission to obey your instincts. Go with the grain. Uh, once you do that, then you've got to set up a work ethic. Sure. And if you want to write, write. And, and I, don't, I don't mean you've got to write something brilliant every day, but you've got to sit down for an hour or so with yourself and give yourself that yeah you know and cultivate your own wherever you want to go creatively so it's really about opening the doors in for yourself and then being regular sure <laughs> it okay. can't, because what happens is you want to do it and then you just don't find the time to do it and it yeah. just never happens so right. yeah well 
I've checked off every box that I had. Is there anything else about all of this that you you would like to add or anything else that we kind of missed that you'd want to touch on? I mean... No, I mean, I, th- I think that, you know, this we want our story to be a part of the larger story of a, a renaissance that I think is very evident all over here mm-hmm. in the UP. Um, we want it to be a part of the new story that, uh, that not only, you know, what with arts and culture, but economically. Mm-hmm. I think we want our series to be something that uh, you can point to, eventually the film, as, as something that happens here and is a part of the wider story of the UP as we go into yeah. uh, a changing economic landscape and, and the UP is, is finding its footing in all the new things that are happening. All of, you know, all of, I mean, there's so much that can be done. It's so exciting, <laughs> right? So uh, if we could be a part of that and join the chorus of that, uh, sure, it would be better. Well, I only have one final question then, and because you said you've listened to every single episode, you pretty much already know what that question is going to be. So how, how do you prefer your pasty? This might be the first time that anybody's ever brought up hummus. Hummus? I'll tell you what I do. I like, I'm, I, I like hummus in anything, but hummus with a pasty. I came back, and this is this is uh, going to sound real Southern real California, L- real right? L- <laughs> we're getting real but, LA right but now. But I had I had all like, I had my favorite hummus, and I was like, you know what? I, and we were definitely pasties were available again, and I was like, Lucy, you, you know, she just got right into them. It was like early, just immediately adopted. I was like, I'll try it with hummus. She's kind of coming along with that, but for me, I do it every time. I do. I just do like an olive hummus. It's wow. Great. She liked ketchup. You know, she's okay, she's, yeah. she's she's a traditionalist. Yeah. But, okay, well, but, that, that's interesting. That that definitely would a little go. SoCal flavor on top. Yeah, of the, that uh, would UP. definitely <laughs> fall underneath the other category yes. on my uh, my pasty chart. But yes, all right. Well, Seth, I want to thank you again for sitting down to uh, to chat with me. This has been kind of a, a long time coming, and uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, really everybody that's been involved in your project obviously it'd be impossible for you to sit here and rattle through everybody's name that's mm-hmm. been involved yeah so if you're listening to this and you've had any sort of involvement in the project we just want to give you a shout out and and yeah and thank love, you. love to the northbound family yeah absolutely yeah. so all right thanks again like i thank said you. seth and uh looking forward to what you come up with in the future well we're big fans and uh, we can't wait to see how you develop this uh, this great resource so so it's just great we connected Okay, it's time for the takeaways from my chat with Seth. The first takeaway is one that Seth actually mentioned, and that's giving yourself permission to pursue your passions in life. So often we have dreams and inspirations of doing things, yet we let our own doubts and fears or the doubts of others stand in our way. If you give yourself permission to pursue whatever it is that you want to do, That's the first step on the path to success. My second takeaway is the idea of being tenacious. Creating a web series and possibly a feature film here in the UP is no easy task at all. Yet, Seth and the whole Northbound team aren't letting that fact stop them. They continue to press on, no matter what obstacles they encounter. I can only hope that other aspiring Uper filmmakers see what they're doing and use it as inspiration to get out there and create. My last takeaway from my chat with Seth is the importance of community. The great things that he and his team have been doing would not be possible without the community stepping up in a big way. It's absolutely amazing how many volunteers they have. But what's even more special is that his entire cast and crew is basically one big family. If I'm being honest though, it it doesn't really surprise me. Because that's what Upers do. I mean, look around the Upper Peninsula. The same thing can be said for so many of the wonderful things that are going on in our towns and cities. And so... I'm going to end this episode with a tip of my cap to all of you awesome youpers out there far and wide. Because at the end of the day, it really is the people here that make the UP someplace special. Merry Christmas, everyone. Chat It Up is a bi-weekly podcast about all things Upper Peninsula of Michigan. If you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, 
and leave me a review. You can also find Chat It Up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Buzzsprout. Thank you for listening in. I'm your host, Shooter, reminding you to keep your chin up and your eyes forward.